Today we are in Germany on the beautiful sunny resort island of Rügen on this beautiful first day of spring. Happy birthday, Bach! Um, and we are here in the town of Lankin Granitz and there is a nice collection of dolmens right here. There's about five or six of them right here. And this is the most impressive one because it's really massive. It's really beautiful. largest island in Germany and it's been inhabited for thousands of years. It was inhabited before the Neolithic but if you look at a map of the megalithic structures on the island you'll see that they are very concentrated particularly in the southeast but there's some further up the coast in the east but it's people were very concentrated on the eastern side of the island and so that's where most of the structures are and they think that there were just not enough resources on the western part of the island to support larger groups of people and there don't seem to be as many rocks, big rocks, over on that side of the island. So the majority of the dolmens are down in the southeast corner of the island. The megalithic structures in this region of northern Germany were built between 5,500 and 5,000 years ago and they were built by the Funnel Beaker culture which was a Neolithic culture, and they were named after their distinctive pottery that they made that had a funnel shape. Mesolithic hunter-gatherers already lived on the island of Rügen, but then uh, funnel beaker people started moving in and the people that lived here adopted the Neolithic way of life and then they started building these megalithic structures. It's estimated that there were about 40,000 megalithic tombs built in this region of northern Germany during the Neolithic era. Back in the 19th century, a survey showed that there were about 239 megalithic graves that remained on the island of Rügen, but today there's only 54 because over time farmers would move them to get them out of the way of their fields. Uh, people would take the big stones like this 
and they would use them to build other structures on the island. So we, there really aren't very many of these left, but there's still a large concentration of them compared to other parts of Europe. This region has a distinctive dolmen building style where it's built up on a mound. It can be either round or rectangular, and then it's surrounded by these small stones, curb stones, and you really only find them up in this extreme northern part of Germany. So these dolmens were graves, and when they excavate them, they find bodies and pottery, um, some tools, and traces of uh, food material in the pottery. Funny, there's like a little mini dolmen inside this dolmen. Dolmens in this region are also distinctive because they will have a more narrow entryway and then it opens up into a wider dolmen and you only find this in this part of Germany. So why did they stop building these structures? Nobody knows for sure, but they were really only built for a period of about 500 years and then they just completely stopped. But it also seems to go along with a change in the culture. They went from being the funnel beaker culture to the corded ware culture is what they're called and there also seems to be a development of individualism by that time and so people didn't seem to be as interested in these sort of more mass graves that you'll see in some of the larger long barrows and passage graves. These dolmens were basically single graves. Um, sometimes 
other bodies would be added like centuries later. Um, but the people never really disturbed the original grave that was in the dolmen, even if they added people to it later. Because the dolmen, the megalithic structures continued to be used as graves even into the Iron Age. So dolmens were single graves, and then they started building passage graves, which were larger and had more bodies in them. So those came later. But then you start to see, as people started using metal, there seems to be an increase in wealth and some sort of a social stratification. You're starting to get a class system. and. They start, and so then they moved into what is called the single grave culture, the Einzelgrab Kultur. After the development of the passage graves, they started going back to single graves. So if you saw my videos on the dolmens that we visited in the south of France, uh, you'll notice that these dolmens look very different, and they're made of a completely different kind of rock. These rocks are glacial erratics, and so they would just be found around and then people would gather them together and build a dolmen whereas the dolmens in the south of France are mostly made of limestone and a lot of that rock wasn't just lying around they sort of had you a, a cut it in the quarries and then bring it to where they wanted to bring it but these are just boulders that were left by glaciers thousands of years ago and they gathered them up. really neat dolmen that we found across the street from the other ones we were looking at. And this one's really nice because it's still so buried. And so this is what it would have looked like originally. They pile up the stones and then they would cover them with dirt. Let's see this one it's still it's on top of a mound. You got these curb stones around it. There seems to be a couple of rows of curb stones. You got these right in the front, but then there's another ring of them over here. Okay, down here, there's some more stones. And there's, there's a stone here, which seems to line up with another stone here. And then they continue around here. And it goes all the way around. And this is what the dolmen looks like from the back. It just looks like a hill. You can't see any stones at all. You have to go around to the front to see the stones and the entrance.
Well, here we are still on the island of Rügen in Germany along the Baltic Sea. And we are at a Neolithic site that we've never been to before and it's called a Long Barrow. Long Barrows were actually the earliest type of megalithic tombs. They are large rectangular rock structures that are in the shape of a longhouse. Now, in the early days of the Neolithic, people lived in these giant wooden structures called longhouses and they held uh, multiple families. It's believed that over time, as those original structures started to decay, people started coming to the site as sort of a memorial and they started uh, placing things like offerings into the original wooden post holes of the structures. And people think that that's why then they started memorializing those places in stone to make them more permanent reminder of their ancestors and how much they owed their ancestors. This deep carving in this stone is from when the stones were originally placed here. And there's also, it's hard to see, but you see how there's a line there. The stone is actually buried deeper into the ground. And when it was new, that bottom line was much further off the ground than it is now. It's sunk quite a bit. So the long barrow typically has a pair of very large guard stones at the beginning. There's this one here, and then over on the other side is the one with the deep incision in it, which is interesting. I've never seen one like that before. So the site is laid out in a rectangle with stones surrounding it. And then in the center, you have the burial chamber, which is just sort of a typical dolmen. Long barrows are the earliest type of megalithic grave. And so they went from long barrows to dolmens to passage graves. And then they started uh, doing single burials again once the funnel beaker culture declined and the corded ware culture arose. And the single graves were not marked with stone? Well, they were. They're stone, they're stone tombs. It's just they were only big enough for one person. Okay. And they find them when they are like are digging up for a road. Like I've seen a picture of one they found somewhere in Germany. And he's, it's basically just, it's kind of like a small dolmen that's really just person sized. And then there would just be a cap on it. 
So kind of like the precursor to the modern grave. Yeah, kind of like when you see those old churches that will have outside those like crypts that are raised, you know, like in Williamsburg at the churchyard. Um, they have these like, you know, raised graves that have a big stone on top, sort of similar. Okay, so I'm standing in the center of the long barrow and I'm going to pan around in a circle so you can kind of see what it looks like. In the center here we have the burial chamber and then out in front here um, on the right and the left you see those big guide stones and now as we come around there's this line of stones here and then they come around the other side. So it's quite a large site compared to these dolmens that I've been showing you. Now, even though they only built monuments like this for about 500 years in this area, uh, people continue to use these sites for burials and other purposes for thousands of years. We find artifacts from the Iron Age, from the eras of the Slavic tribes, and so people continued to use these sites, even if they didn't know who built them or what they were for, people still found ways to incorporate them into their lives. We're still on the island of Rügen on the Baltic Sea in northern Germany and this is a dolmen called Goldbusch near the town of Altensien. This is a cute compact little dolmen. Um, it used to have two capstones, only one of them remains. Um, they're not really sure where the other one went. Um, they must have taken it and broken it up for something. Um, so you have to picture that there would have been another one of these right next to it. Now this capstone has a lot of these little cupules on it, like we saw on the French Dolmen de Bon Arme. They're kind, of, they're kind of hard to see on camera, but there's like, there's an indentation here. There's one here, more here. I think they said there are 27 of them on this capstone.
there was a map that was drawn in 1829 of the area around the town here, and it showed 43 megalithic graves, but now this is the only one that remains. The 19th century was devastating to megalithic monuments. So how did these monuments get built? They required a lot of people to build them. It required a lot of strength, a lot of energy, and so you had to get people to come from miles away to come and build them. So there appears to be an increase in wealth and power from some individuals because it would require somebody to be able to garner the resources and the influence to convince a whole bunch of people to come from a distance to all come together and build these megalithic monuments and they were rewarded with a feast and so there had to have been a surplus of uh, agriculture and animals in order to provide for these feasts to bring everybody together to build these monuments. The development of these megalithic structures, or monuments is another term that you could use for them, seems to be indicative of the beginning of ancestor worship in the Neolithic. Because before the Neolithic, people weren't sedentary, they weren't settled, they didn't seem to really have any kind of monuments that people would return to over and over again, because they didn't need to worship their ancestors because nature gave them everything they needed. But once people started settling and farming and building things and developing things, then the people who came before you, who set up those things for you, became very important. And so one theory is that they started making these monuments, though, as a way to remind people of the past and bring people together in memory of the past and the people who came before them. But then, because, you know, people are people, and people have really not changed at all throughout history, um, a lot of these monuments probably became vanity projects for the local rich guy, sort of like the pyramids in Egypt that were being built around the same time. So sometimes these structures could maybe be um, shows of wealth.
Today we are on the German island of Rügen on the Baltic Sea and we are in front of Prora, which was the Nazi beach resort that was part of the German Kraft durch Freude program, which was Strength Through Joy, which was sort of like a uh, morale boosting project during Nazi Germany. These old looking buildings that you see here are the original buildings. They were the only buildings that were completed before the war started and then they stopped construction and nobody ever stayed here for vacation. And the resort was basically abandoned. Now right here is where you can see how the resort is currently under development to be a brand new beach resort with apartments and restaurants and they did it in the same architectural style as the original building which that's a choice. So they have a model inside the museum here and it's showing you what the resort was supposed to look like and they're basically completing it. which. Seems odd.
Well, thank you for joining me. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more history videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.